Okay, everyone, the meeting is at order. I want to thank everybody and mention that we did uh, have our meeting scheduled for a week ago and the weather uh, interfered and a decision was made at that time to uh, cancel the meeting last Wednesday night because of severe weather and uh, here we are tonight. That's a rare occurrence. I don't recall in 40 years that it ever happened that a regular board meeting was canceled or rescheduled uh, due to weather. But that's what brings us here tonight and I thank everybody for adjusting to that. If it was hard for some people, I wish that weren't so. Would the secretary read the meeting notice? The Board of Directors of the School District of the City of Erie, Pennsylvania and the Board of Directors of the City of Erie Regional Career and Technical School will meet in regular session on Wednesday, March 19th, 2014 in the auditorium at East High School, 1001 Atkins Street at 6 o'clock p.m. by request of the President, John C. Harkins. And now roll call. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Here. Mr. Brzezinski? Here. Mr. Casillo? Here. Mr. Fabrizi? Here. Mrs. McNair? Here. Mr. Petrunger? Here. Ms. Shenley? Here. Mr. Spagel? Here. Mr. Harkins? Here. February is a rough month if you live in Erie, and we all know that. The line of the obituaries gets very long, and we've got uh, uh, the custom and habit here of acknowledging members of our school district family who have passed away during that month in February and this one in particular being as harsh as it was we lost many good people. We're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Nicholas Devlin a fifth grade student at Jefferson Elementary School and he'll be introduced by Mr. John Wazalewski the assistant principal followed by a moment of silence for the, <coughs> silence for the following people. I'll mention these people and then I'll call upon Mr. Wazalewski to introduce Nicholas. George Kaufman was a teacher and coach, retired, and he passed away on February 12th of this year. Richard Bendig, a retired teacher, passed away on February 14th of this year. Jeffrey Cazola, a retired engineer, passed away on February 19th of this year. Dorothy Ziplick, retired teacher, passed away on February 26th of this year. Caroline Boozer Spano, a retired teacher assistant, passed away on March 8th. And Ada Lawrence, a retired teacher who was recognized as the first African-American teacher hired in Erie, Pennsylvania after the turn of the century, passed away on March 6th of 2014. She made it her life's mission to educate <coughs> children and was hired as the first full-time teacher on, in Erie, uh, first black full-time teacher in Erie on September 3rd of 1946. She began her 36-year career at McKinley Elementary School at a salary of $1,600 per year. Ada Lawrence was born in Erie. She attended Burns Elementary and then Gridley Middle School, graduated from Strong Vincent High School in the class of 1939. Graduated from Cheney State Teachers College, the class of 1943. She taught at Burton School, Jones School, Penn School, and Wayne School before retiring in 1982. So, and when we conclude the Pledge of Allegiance and have our moment of silence, please uh, think and with Mr. appreciation. Chairman, yes. Ms. Uh we need more to say than just uh, goodbye Mr. Kaufman. George Kaufman was a standard bearer for East High. He was a coach. He was a, a social studies teacher. Uh, he was a Pied Piper with the kids. He was a tremendous guy that was always there to listen to the kids. He coached baseball, he coached football, and he was my friend. Uh, I feel terrible because I was out of town when he passed away, but uh, he'll always be with us because he was truly the spirit of East High, and I needed to say that. Thank you. And Mr. President, I'd just like to Mr. Spagel. follow up with that. He was my teacher, in fact, and um, he, he taught us world cultures, I want to say in 10th grade, and he started a um, overseas student exchange program that, has, that I participated in. And because of his influence is, what, is one of the main reasons why I joined the military and why I have a love of traveling, just because of him. And he really, that man affected my life. I agree with both of you, and certainly in their own way, each of these people has given uh, personally and uh, 
time-wise and everything else. Uh, we appreciate all of them, and please let's think of them with, with appreciation when we have our moment of silence. And so now, would uh, John Wojcicki, the assistant principal at Jefferson, please come forward to introduce Nicholas Devlin to us? Thank you, President Harkins and members of the board. Dr. Badams, I'm pleased to announce Mr. Nick Devlin. He's the son of Neil and Daria Devlin. They live in Jefferson's Boundary. He has two brothers, Alex in first grade, he's seven. He's got Nathaniel in grade three, he's nine. Um, Nick likes to play basketball. He's gonna play basketball for us this year. He spent the last two years playing football. Um, he's part of our Connects Club. He's part of our College for Every Student. He's one of the Jefferson Student Ambassadors. He enjoys math and gym. Those are his two favorite subjects. Nick and I have had a discussion about higher education. First he started with the University of Michigan, then we discussed West Point, and now he's settled at the Naval Academy. He plans on studying math and economics, and we're happy to have Nick here today. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Nicholas, would you come around this way and allow us to shake your hand? Thank you, Nicholas. For the benefit of the public who may not know, uh, we invite and have up here with us uh, during the school year a student representative from one of our high schools. And to spread it around and give everyone an opportunity, we tend to do it in a way that has a student here for two meetings, two successive meetings. Well, a month ago, I uh, stumbled with the, the electronic uh, aspect of our meetings and I did not uh, see in time the introductory statement that we had for Anna Reyes Valdez, who was our student rep this evening and was that night. She was never properly introduced. So I'm gonna do that now and uh, I regret this because we've had some fine students, certainly all of them were good, but uh, she stands out. I think you'll agree when you hear this. Behind each person's individuality is a story that makes them unique. This is the story of Anna Reyes. Anna is, a pr Anna is proud to say that she was born and raised in Mexico until age five. Living in Mexico was an experience that she remembers positively, but her life changed dramatically when her parents decided to move Anna and her seven siblings to Erie, Pennsylvania 13 years ago. As of today, only three of them have entered a, col entered a college and are continuing, continuing on with their education. Anna's brother is going to school for international business. One sister is going for accounting and the other sister is going to school for teaching. Anna is the next one in her family to be going on to college and furthering her education. She has set up goals for herself to achieve all she has proposed for herself in life. Anna's goals are realistic get all of her college applications in and finish high school with a high rank so she can go on to college and major in architecture. Anna just recently found out that she's been accepted to Penn State's main campus at University Park for the architecture program. An even bigger goal is to graduate from college with a degree in architecture and ultimately a career in that field. Since she was in seventh grade, she knew she wanted to become in life. At first she thought she wanted to become an interior designer, but by the eighth grade she had decided that she didn't just want to work with structures that had already been built by someone else. Anna thought to herself and realized that if she really wanted to design and build something, she should just do it all from the beginning. She should be the one to start the process of a structure and build it herself. 
that's when she looked into the field of architecture. After she looked into that field, it's all that she looked forward to doing in her career in life. Anna applied to and was accepted at both Central Tech and Collegiate Academy for high school. Anna chose Central Tech because she knew that she would not only have her regular academic classes, but she would also have a class where she would learn more about the field she wanted to pursue after high school. No other high school offered her that opportunity. Since she has attended Central Tech, she always knew that, there, that that was the correct choice for her. Anna is currently in the CAD, the Computer Aided and Drafting Design Lab. This is her fourth year in this lab. The Advanced Manufacturing Institute, where Anna is the third lead designer, uses real-world production projects to te teach both the advanced manufacturing process and STEM concepts. The team is creating a school-based company called Hiring Students as employees to design, pro prototype, and mass-produce products. Anna's role is to turn ideas into accurate third models, and she was an integral and she was integral in the production of over 300 cannonades for the Perry 200 project. She is currently working on a three-dimensional multi-material sign for the school board using a new building logo. She has taken part in Central Tech's <coughs> annual Tech the Halls, which will be a state-of-the-art 4D experience for the 2013 display. It was. Anna is working with programmers to create a third virtual model of our lights that can be programmed. Third project she is involved with is the Real World Design Challenge, where a team of six Central Tech students are designing an aircraft to solve a precision agriculture program problem with invasive species, a very complicated STEM mission at a high school level, at a high level, I'm sorry. In this, her final year of high school, Anna is becoming even more involved in projects at school besides the ones just mentioned. She is part of student council, the senior class treasurer, and she has the possibility of becoming the class valedictorian. Anna is self-described as shy, so she is stepping far out of her comfort zone by serving on this board committee in this role. However, Anna feels that the honor she feels at being selected will outweigh her nervousness because she will benefit from this experience and will take many good lessons with her as she goes on with her studies in her adult life. Well, Anna, I personally apologize to you because that should have been read a month ago and I goofed. But now, because this is the second meeting and we, never, we just get to know you, now comes the time when I present you with a certificate of appreciation, ironically. ironically. So I was very uh, eager to make it right and mention all that we wanted the public to know about you. And now we have this certificate of appreciation presented to you for your service as a student representative to the board. And it's on behalf of the superintendent and all of us board members, so I'd like to present this to you now. I wish you would give some <laughs> remarks. <laughs> Take the heat off me. I just want to uh, say thank you for having me here. Um, I appreciate being here. And like I, like I said in my um, paper, I, I am kind of shy, so, <laughs> and I'm nervous right now. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you for having me here. Well, you should be proud of yourself. We're proud of you, and I just regret that we didn't get to know you sooner out loud. Thank you, Alan. I'll announce that we had, the board had two executive sessions. On March 5th of this year, we met in executive session from 7.42 p.m. to 8.41 p.m. at the James Barker Center at 21st and Sassafras. This evening, we met in executive session in the East High School Library from 5.25 p.m. to 5.44 p.m. The next item of business is hearing as citizens and persons desiring to speak for five minutes must submit their request in writing to the secretary's office at least one week prior to the board meeting. All others may speak for three minutes. We have two citizens who wrote in and requested five minutes of speaking time. The first one is Mr. William McDonald. Mr. McDonald? If Mr. McDonald is not here, Beverly Potts <coughs> is the second citizen. Mrs. Potts, she is speaking to concerns regarding East High School.
Good evening. Uh, Superintendent Jay Adams, President John Harkins, and members of the Erie City School Board. I'd like to introduce myself to you. My name is Beverly Potts. I reside at 605 Helm Court, Erie, Pennsylvania, 16503. Now I do need my glasses, because I can't read what I wrote. I didn't think that I was going to know a lot of you sitting up there, but I'm, ama <laughs> I'm amazed that I do. <laughs> so, um, what I'm here about is I'm here for many reasons. Number one is really that I'm a taxpayer of the city. Uh, I was a past East High president of PTA for 11 years. I am presently, and as John Donowski would put it, you're never going to not be president of the Alumni Association unless somebody steps in and takes your place. Thank you, John, very much. Um, and I am a true warrior. I just want you to know that. Graduated from East High School in 1960. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Uh, the old saying go that history does repeat itself, and I think we all know that. And this is all about maintaining this building and maintaining what we have right now. Um, when we first, when they first talked about building the new East High School and we voted on this, my, my stand and I stood up and said, only if you maintain this building far better than you maintain that building sitting over there. Because there were, John Donowski would tell me, there were lists of jobs that needed to be done that he would submit at the end of every year and that were never completed. And there were things that I saw that needed to be done and that were never, never touched. This is supposedly the state-of-the-art building. I don't know what they call it now, uh, but that was my thought. Uh, it opened up in 1990, and here we are now in 2014. We have one more year before it's almost halfway before we hit 75 years old. Uh, this beautiful building needs some touching up. I'm in the building, I'm around the building, I see things, I walk, and I can tell you right now that the vinyl floors have been in dire need of something and probably when they built the building, it was called it cut costs, as they say, so they didn't have to put what really needed to be down. And the thing that appalled me more is recently I attended a basketball game in the gym. And I'm at a lot of schools. They are very beautiful floors, and they are maintained beautifully. Have you seen the gym floor lately? Have you looked at the pads on the wall where they're cut and slit? I don't see that in other schools. I'm not understanding why it is that I'm hearing rumblings about, here we are back at the same thing that I had when I was in school. Everything goes to that big school on the hill. If there's anything needed, it goes there. When I worked as PTA president, I would run into workmen in the hallway, and they would laugh at me if I made any comment about you know, you were here yesterday or last week or last month. Well, they had stuff to do up there. And they joked about it in the fact that they didn't feel that it was important to have things nice at East because they just got ruined after. <laughs> I looked at it in a different light. I also counted the missing globes in the gym. There's lights that are open that the globes have been taken down for whatever reason, or maybe broken, and they've never been replaced. Let's take a look outside. Have you seen the fence out on Brandis' side? Somebody either ran into it or smashed it. It's all, all crooked. I've talked to several people about the fence, and once in a while I get results. And I do want you to know that several of my alumni and I still are doing things around the building. That my friends over the summer have planted plants, of which last year when we planted them, the mowers mowed them all off. So we came back, and this time we've put a uh, circle around it with the vinyl and replanted. And this year we're going to have a load of gravel or a load of peat come in to, to finish it up. But these are people that graduated in the 40s and 50s and, and are helping me. So you can see I'm still working my way through East High School. And I'm watching it. I want you to know, don't, 
don't look over your shoulder because I'll be back there. I'll tell you a little story. I graduated in 1960 and my daughter started, my oldest daughter started in 1980. Bev, can you wrap it up? Or I will, okay. this will be fast. In 1980, and I came into the school to tour and noticed that up in the upper right hand corner of the auditorium was a scaffolding. I immediately talked to Miss Andrews and she just smiled at me and she said, oh, we have a leak. Well, long story short, I came to the school board and I said, I'm sorry, I graduated 20 years. That scaffolding was up there when I graduated. And to me, it happened so fast, they either fixed the leak or took the scaffolding down. But I wanted you to know that was 20 years. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Are there any other citizens who wish to speak? Uh, talk, Mr. Spiegel. Mr. President, I'd just like to say thank you to Mrs. Potts. I know that when I graduated from high school with your daughters and you were instrumental in the PTA and we really appreciate all the work that you did for us back then and continue to do all the work for us. Certainly appreciate your candor here and I'm sure that we'll get together and see what we can do about, I'm learning this stuff, to see what we can do about the facilities. <laughs> Any other citizens, please come forward, write your name and address and state your name, and you'll have three minutes to address us. Hi, my name is Veronica Rexford. I'm the communications coordinator at Mothers Against Teen Violence. Uh, I don't need three minutes. I just want to let you know about the Erie Youth Summer Job Fair that we're having at the Booker T. Washington Center on Saturday, March 29th. It's going to be from noon to four. It'll take place in the gym. It is free to youth and employers, and we're targeting ages 15 to 25 year olds, and they should bring their ID and their resume and their working papers, dressed to impress. I'm gonna leave some flyers here, so if any of the parents or anyone else would like to take one, they'll be available. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens wish to speak this evening? If there are no other citizens who wish to speak, the next item on our agenda is a report of committees and liaison. Is there any board member who wants to make a report or have any concerns about committees or liaisons? Mr. President. Angela. I would like to. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, this coming Tuesday, March 25th, here at East High School at 5.30 p.m., um, we will hold our first Better Together workshop. Um, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, the focus on, of the workshop will be to engage parents or care providers and empower them with the education, with skills and connecting with the school system. And during the workshops, we'll address um, strategies on connecting more effectively with your child and communicating more effectively with them. Um, and also, we'll be talking about uh, other various topics um, in regards to our Common Core and um, also um, starting a savings plan for um, parents and children. And then while we're engaging the parents, we will um, have a motivational workshop to encourage the students to have a mindset of achieving greatness. Um, and our motivational workshop will include our special guest, um, Cliff Crosby, who is a uh, former Erie School District student and currently works with the Student Assistance Program in his um, city. Uh, and uh, he's also a former NFL football player and a Super Bowl champion. Um, and we're very pleased to have him here with us, uh, along with several other speakers um, that will be talking about several other topics. And um, at 5.30, we will have resource tables available for the parents and the students uh, and community members to browse um, from various organizations, um, just to let our families know what's out there for our students and themselves. Um, we will be serving dinner to those who attend. The cost of the workshop is free. There is no registration for the workshop at this time. You just come and um, hopefully you bring, um, the parents will bring their children and um, other care providers will attend. It's open to the public. 
Um, and once again, it's here at East on Tuesday, March 25th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. And I'm just making a plea that um, those of us who are here and those, who has, those of you who are listening and have heard about it would reach out to other parents, student, and students, and community members and invite them out um, to this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McNair. Is there any other, um, any questions or comments on that or any other committee liaison reports to be made tonight? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Brzezinski? Yeah, I'd just like to take a minute to congratulate our kids at the Collegiate Academy. Uh, we came in second in the state and we had to wait to see if we could be the wild card. Uh, second in the state sounds pretty good, but think about it, we came in ahead of McDowell, we came in ahead of Prep, we came in ahead of Mercyhurst, and a whole lot of other people. Those were our kids up on the hill, working like you never saw anybody work before to get the knowledge they needed to get where they're going. Uh, they just got the news, I guess, today, Nance? Yes, yesterday or today, and uh, looks like they're going to Hawaii. So we're proud of them, and go get it. Thank you. Any other reports from anyone on committees and liaisons? Mr. President. Mr. Casillo. I, I, this isn't a report, but I just want to acknowledge Angela uh, McNair's efforts. Uh, this has been a brainchild of hers since she was running on the school board uh, to uh, become an activist in the community and uh, for the betterment uh, of our children. And I want to acknowledge that, uh, and that you're doing a terrific job in, uh, in working with the public and uh, helping our kids out. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Any other items under this category? If not, may we have a motion from someone to approve and accept the committee reports? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Casillo, seconded by Mr. Petrunger that we accept the committee reports. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. There is no unfinished business, so the next item will be the new business of the school district and supplemental and vocational. Robin, is there vocational? I'm no, vo no vocational. Okay, this, this, we need a motion to approve the new business of the school district and its supplemental new business. So could we have a motion for an all-inclusive motion? So be it. Mr. Petrunger moves, second, second. by Mr. Casillo. Any discussion by anyone or any comments on any of it? Mr. Harkins? Dr. Badams? I'd like to just, just draw everyone's attention to item uh, 532, which is the adoption of the curriculum. And uh, there have been numerous committees working throughout the district over the course of the past three years, actually. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we now have all of that work cataloged and appropriately displayed online. Um, you can actually see it at, uh, at our website, www.eriesd.org. Uh, and there's a tab uh, on that web page that's labeled academics and underneath that you'll be able to find all that great work uh, and see what exactly our, our, uh, our plan is uh, for each of our curriculum areas. So I want to thank Mrs. Sedali for spearheading that effort and all the folks that worked with her to do it. So um, that, that's an important, um, import, an important item that we'll be approving this evening. Any questions or comments by anyone else on any other item in the new business or supplemental? Mm -hmm. Mr. President. Mr. Casillo. Thank you. Uh, I, just a suggestion, if we may. Uh, under the new business for travel, could we insert what the uh, purpose of the travel was, whether it's a convention or a seminar or uh, curriculum, that kind of thing? We could do that. At least it gives us an idea of, you know, for the number of people and what the purpose of the travel is. So Thank you. Going forward, you want that to be printed for us when we get this, and the superintendent's aware and says can do. I, I just, of course, look to our board. It's included in the attachment, and um, but I can talk to the person that submits them if that's the will of the board. Any other comments or questions by anyone on any other item in this? If not, roll call on the new business and supplemental of the school district. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Casillo? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Petrunger? Yes. 
Ms. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. We have consideration of meeting minutes for approval on the date of February 10th and 12th of 2014, and they're attached electronically to the agenda. May we have a motion to approve those minutes for February 10th and 12th of 2014? So be it. Moved by Mr. Petrunger. Second. Second by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item of business is approval of bills and payroll. May we have a motion to approve them as presented <coughs> for payment? So be it. Moved by Mr. Petrunger. Second. Second by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Casillo? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Petrunger? Yes. Ms. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. And now we come to the report of the superintendent, Dr. Badams. Thank you, Mr. Harkins. Uh, first off, I have to acknowledge that um, our students are all uh, dutifully um, hopefully actually this evening they're getting a lot of rest because many of them are currently engaged in the uh, PSSA exams. So the testing window began yesterday uh, and, and our students are uh, dutifully performing in grades three through eight uh, on, on their various assessments. So we're eager for them to display all the great things they've learned this year. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate uh, the invitation to the public to join us on the 25th for this inaugural Better Together uh, workshop. Uh, great opportunity for people to ask questions of the district, to learn what other services are available, and to, to um, interact. And, and we're hoping for more and more community support. Uh, and I think part of that is the district being open to answering questions and helping to point people toward uh, ways they can help their, their students to be more successful in school. And, and along those same lines, um, I want to recognize a couple of, of uh, organizations that have stepped up and, and um, uh, helped us in significant ways. The first is uh, Erie Insurance, uh, who, um, again, thanks to a lot of the efforts of uh, Daria Devlin and, the, and, uh, and Matt Cummings that they've been doing through the Partnership for Erie's Public Schools, uh, donated $10,000 to the district, uh, actually to the Partnership for Erie's Public Schools, uh, through the EITC program. Uh, that's earmarked for a specific program that, that we have applied for this particular um, tax incentive program that we have for businesses that will, will benefit Central Tech uh, for career and tech programs. And we're actually hoping uh, that through the efforts of Mr. Punt uh, as Director of Career and Technical Education that much of that will actually go toward uh, helping our younger students do more career exploration uh, and, and establish a portfolio of goals and so forth to engage them more fully in the purposes of education. The other significant donation we got was actually in supplies. Um, the, uh, the, Hammett, um, the Hammett Foundation uh, provided our students in, at Central Tech in the health um, areas um, for actually for our medical assistant program, nursing, dental and protective services programs, uh, gave us a whole bunch of medical items um, everything from gowns and gloves, alcohol preps, and other supplies that they need for the hands-on education they get in that, in that medical cluster. So we're very grateful to the Hammond Foundation for that. Uh, one other big thing that I hope uh, our folks out there will um, keep in mind is that kindergarten registration uh, for the upcoming school year actually begins on April 1st. So there'll be a lot more information available um, this registration is, will be held again at the district administration building and, and doesn't require an appointment. Uh, and the key to, for everyone to understand is that incoming students have to turn five years of age by September 1st of 2014. Uh, there's, there is information available obviously at the district administration building but also um, at our website at uh, www.eriesd.org slash kindergarten. And we'll be doing a lot more to make sure that our public's aware of this. Typically, um, we get a relatively small number of, of early registrations, and we're hoping to improve on that. And we do have some folks from the community uh, through efforts like Erie Together that are ho hoping to help us to make those numbers increase this year. And with that, uh, my report is concluded. Any questions or discussion for the superintendent? May we have a motion to accept his report for approval? So moved. 
Moved by Mr. Casillo. Second. Seconded by Mr. Petronger. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. The report of the secretary. May we have a motion to approve her report? So be it. Second. Moved by Mr. Petrunger, seconded by Mr. Spagel. Any questions, discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Casillo? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Petrunger? Yes. Ms. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. There are no bids to consider for award this evening. Is there any other matter which any board member would wish wish to bring up for discussion. I'll just jump in and point out the obvious. The event that uh, Ms. McNair has been working on and that Dr. Badham's just referenced uh, is a citywide event and it's all grade levels. This location was picked because it was the best place to accommodate the most people, but it's not only for high schoolers and it's not limited to this neighborhood. It's citywide and all grade levels, so all parents throughout the city are encouraged to attend and participate. Any other matter which any director wishes to bring up at this time? May we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Mr. Casillo, second. second by Mr. Petrunger and Mr. Brzezinski. Discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone. <laughs>